Jackie. Hi, this is Diana. And you're listening to Home Bodies Only, where we welcome all bodies to join us as we break down and dissect HBO series. And this episode, we are discussing Euphoria, episode six, the next episode. All right. What do you think Before we get into... What? What do you think about it? I just missed what... When you hear that title. I know. I think yeah. of uh, Chill to the next episode. The next episode. I know. Now it's going to be in my head all day. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good album. <laughs> it is. Okay. Um, so I had no idea if they're referring to that. I don't really know. Um, I'm sure there is meaning behind it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so before I get started... Little little things that happened over Instagram in the past week. Very exciting. Um, What's that? I, I follow HBO follow? Max on Instagram. Did you? Did I think you? I'm up a follower or two. Let's see here. Oh, I'm up to 88 followers. Wow, I've gained follower. <laughs> I wonder so what lame. you started with before you know became public. 86, maybe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think slowly, I haven't gained I'm gaining a ton followers. From, yeah. I haven't gained a ton, I don't think, from the podcast. I, when we had our podcast Instagram account, which I still, you know, don't even mm. go on because I'm afraid I'm going to do mm-hmm. something to myself. Um, we had followers on that that I think were like listening to the podcast. So if you haven't figured it out, yeah. um, I can't access that account right now. So anyway, um, but I I have gotten booted. random followers. What? What'd you say? No, I said you were booted. Oh, I was. I, I yeah, you were I booted. can't access the account. Yeah. I can look at it. Yeah, totally <laughs> booted. Um, so before we start, anyway, Natalie Minerva does the nails on Euphoria. I found out through an HBO Max Instagram post, um, and really, like the nails, they're a thing. They're like another, you know, they're like a supporting act actor in, in the show, and she does. I press would on agree nails. with that. Yes, and I guess that's. They wanted to do, I think, I assume they want to do press on because it is a show and it's, you know, they don't have to have permanent nails on them, although I'm sure it's not great for their nails anyway. Um, or not permanent, but, you know, the gels or whatever. Some of them mm-hmm. might have their own gels. I'm not sure. But anyway, so she's, I guess, like the queen of these press on nails. So now I follow her. I mentioned her. So I took their post and I made it into my story and I tagged her and put like hashtag something like euphoria nails because i do mm-hmm. think there is a hashtag euphoria nails um <laughs> and i put our like hashtag supporting actors or something like that supporting actor and she she loved it and she mentioned her in my mentioned me in her story so she you know she made it her story and she put hearts on top of it which i thought was really nice cuz she's she's got a big following and then i also did it with the makeup artist. Um, it's just mm. she didn't she didn't um, mention it in her story, but it's just it's very interesting because obviously so much work is behind all of these shows, down mm-hmm. to the nails. It's like everything is thought out. And I think sometimes you take those things for granted, but so much so much thought and details. And um, this makeup artist, I mean, the makeup is is something. I do like looking at the makeup in this mm-hmm. in this um, show, and she is. She goes by Donnie. Oh gosh, I have the, I have the account here. Hold on, let me go into my photos here for my screenshot. Oh, Donnie Davy. I think her full name is like Donniella or something like that. I don't know. I forgot. Okay. But she's Donnie D O N N I dot D A V Y. If you'd like to find her, she does the makeup. Um, but I will say, I also tagged Sean Martini, the guy mm-hmm. who plays Mina in the last in see in episode five, um the date of or the the hookup with Cal. And he d- mentioned, you know, mentioned me in his story or did basically re- restoried our story. And then he liked the post that I tagged him in. He didn't follow me back, but he liked the That's post okay. that I tagged him in. He also sent me like a fire emoji. Aww. I was psyched. I was like, that oh my God, extra. I love him. Thank you so much. 
That does take a lot of effort. That's like swiping up yeah. to get the fire, not just hitting Like actually finding heart. one. I know. And he really looked at the story like, thank you, because I work on those on Canva. Okay. Mm, <laughs> Every some time. Canva. Yeah. I love me some Canva. I try to really like design to go with the theme of the show, it all the shows that I do it for. Thank you. I do. It's, it's a little bit of work. Um, so I appreciated the fire emoji. I did write back to him and said, OMG, I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, he didn't reply to that or even heart it. So I'm hoping he doesn't think I'm psycho. Weirdo. <laughs> I didn't bother him again. So I mean, yeah. But I mean, Post Malone follows him. I'm really hoping that Post Malone saw the Mm. story and was like who what is that i think i'm going to click on this link yeah <laughs> yeah because i have some spare time with my touring schedule I, yes. what is this anyway yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure we've had some you know listens from like older you know older shows like sex lives mm. of college girls are getting some hits this week yeah listen. um I, it might be post malone i mean it might be um also what else was the other one? Oh, still from Scenes from a Marriage got some hits. So, remember. Okay. People are summer binging. I Let's like it. Let's get into this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's get into this one. You know, it's funny. This is all about Halloween, really. I mean, it's not all about Halloween, but My the episode is Halloween, favorite Halloween, which I really – Sorry. Oh, see, I loved it, of course. <laughs> and I have all the info on their costumes. Good, because, because I, I have it. so many questions on what these oh, costumes oh, 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 oh. were. So. Oh, I'll give you it all. Okay. Yeah, well, let's start. Thanks. Let's. The episode starts with they sent her on McKay this mm-hmm. time. Father really pushed him in football, like worked him so hard. I mean, I know that's just like what your husband does to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to your kids because mm-hmm. he's a PE teacher and a coach. No, I'm just kidding. Coach, like yeah. made the kid puke. I mean, the poor thing. We're not at that Matt level would never of do puking, that. but um, no, he does push them, no. especially our oldest. He does? Okay. He pushes them okay. to... In a not in well, a, not like not in this, this though. Way. <laughs> no. Um, okay, yeah. like where it, it was cracking me up though because sometimes um, my husband will take our oldest to um, like baseball practice, and he's there. He's the travel coach, so he'll offer to like go a little bit early. And it was cracking me up how in this McKay's dad was like, "Okay, now you're ready for practice." Now my husband would never push him that <laughs> to do like a full practice before, right? But, um, you know, right. putting in that extra work and um, it doesn't seem like his father was really abusive. That abusive. Say. But it no. was more like, get no. it. I did like his pep talk, though. I'm sure you're going to get into mm-hmm. that, but I wrote that down um, well, when they were at the kitchen I table. So much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I took that much notes on that, but, um, well, I do have a little bit. So, um Let's see. He went to a Division One college. He thought he was going to mm-hmm. be pro. Then he realized everyone was as good as him. Right. Maybe right. even better, right? Felt Cassie at one point was a distraction. Also, he didn't know why she wouldn't like just acknowledge those videos um, mm. that he had seen online. Um, he does end up, I think this is later in the episode, talking to his dad about football. Is this the part? And his dad's like, it's all in your head. Is that the part you liked? I don't know what part you liked. <laughs> it was actually the part when the kid, when I had to put the um, subtitle on and they did, it just said mumbles, like when he was at a young age and obviously uh, the player on the other team had like mumbled something to him. And we know what he probably was saying to him, calling him a name. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll say that. Mm. And oh, yes, I yes, just, yes, like, yes. When they were sitting at the kitchen table and he was talking about like, you know, in life, like they just want to get a rise out of you and all that. These are like yes. legit conversations that we have with the son oh. constantly. Me too. About like, but I have reaction, that with my right? son. And my like, son doesn't play a sport, right? I just mean in life. I don't mean in sports because yeah. it's more like in life. Right. Um, I think every parent out there has these types of conversations, especially when you have a kid like mine who, um, takes things so serious. In so many ways Mm -hmm. and like really like just, you know, at that young age when they're really starting to figure out like how to ignore or how to use, you know what I mean? And just having those conversations because it is, it's about the reaction. How many times, I mean, as working in a school, how many times have we talked to kids who are feeling quote unquote bullied, right? And we talk about their reaction to things. So I really, I could identify with that. And we know in the show, I don't always identify. So. (laughs) 
Yeah, no, I liked connected. that too. And I, that's great. I'm glad. Mm, um, I was connected. Yeah, I liked that part too. And same thing, I, mm-hmm. like same thing we always say to Donovan, same thing, like they want a reaction out of you. Like even with my husband to him, he'll yeah. tease him. And Donovan's like, <gasps> takes it all seriously. I'm like, Donovan, mm-hmm. he is trying to get a reaction. Will you stop? Like, Yeah, oh. yeah. I don't know. I th- I think with me, not that I was like so didn't care what people said to me. Believe me, I did. But having two older sisters that just like mm-hmm. emotionally beat the crap out of me. I mean, not not really yeah. physically. Like I can take a lot of teasing. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, that makes anyway. sense. Um, yeah. Because I – I think I heard it all from my sisters. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times, like uh, Jacoby will, <clears throat> it's almost like he tries it out on his little brother. Like he'll mm-hmm. tease him or do things that older kids have done to him, or done to and, him. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's had a hard time with or something, and then he, it's like he's got to try it out on him, and it's like, well, why you didn't like what people did that you know? But it's all growing up, and but it's it a can sibling be, thing. Um, I don't know. Ugh, so frustrating. Yeah, um, but anyway. Okay, so let's get into Halloween. I'll start, I'll just go over all the costumes. And I did have to definitely do some digging. So I'm going to start with um, Jules because Mm. I think we kind of see her first. I'm like, oh, she's a beautiful angel. She looks so pretty, whatever. No, she's Juliet from 1996, Romeo and Juliet. She's Claire Danes. I did not know that at first. Rue is not Leonardo DiCaprio. Rue is Marlene Dietrich. She is an actress from, well, she lived from 1901 to 1992, which is crazy. But she was one of the legendary actresses of Hollywood's golden age, not okay. gilded age, <laughs> <laughs> and the first German movie actress to become a major Hollywood star. She changed career direction several times. She started as a cabaret artist, then chorus girl, then film in the tw- in 1920s Berlin. She made the transition to Hollywood to become an international movie star for two decades, interrupted by the Second World War. Then she became a forces entertainer on the front line. So what was really interesting about her, and I think why she dressed like her, is she – I got to find it. She would wear um, men's tuxes, and she would wear trousers. She, like, started the the trend of women wearing trousers. Um, she also – Sounds, I believe she was bisexual and she was, here we go, unusually, oh my God, that was, that was, this is terribly written, unusually for an actress, that sounds terrible, so unusual, not unusually, that's what they should have done, <laughs> unusual for an actress in those days, Marlene appeared to care little, little for her public image and became famous, here we go, for her androgynous film roles and her bisexuality. She often wore men's clothes such as tuxedos and made the wearing of trousers a new fashion item for women. So she was married to a man. But anyway, so I thought that was interesting because I mm-hmm. would have not known that. Nobody said anything. So obviously you have to like no, do some digging. No, it's an interesting choice for a um, high school costume party. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Like these, this is you know. not normal. This is I euphoria. Know. I okay? know. <laughs> Come on, girl. <laughs> this is art. Um, I was digging okay. it. So Cassie, oh, Cassie no is Alabama Worley, as she tells us. So I Googled it. I do remember this movie, True Romance. It was Patricia Arquette was – no, not Patricia. Which Arquette was it? Was there a theme at this party? Like – No. No, it was Halloween. They did whatever the heck they wanted. Well, because this is – Except for – yeah, not even – not even – no, there was no theme. Um, No, they all just dressed how they wanted to. Nobody – did anybody pair up really? Nobody went down to the party Um, city to get the – They weren't going to party city. A lot of thought went – yeah. Behind all of these outfits, I mean, costumes. Um, so True Romance was a Quentin Tarantino. It was written by Quentin Tarantino. Um, Patricia Arquette, thank you, I was right. Christian Slater was in it. Val Kilmer, Gary Oldman, Dennis Hopper, Brad Pitt, Christopher Walken. They seem like movies I do that weren't remember even this movie. Born. I don't. They weren't. It was from 1993, <laughs> the year I graduated high school. I know they're they are the coolest. Like Euphoria teenagers are like beyond. Like they're, they're so just, cool. Um, they're just too cool. Um, so I I do remember this movie. I honestly don't know if I saw it or not. 
Mm. I probably didn't. I didn't really go to, I don't know. We went to the movies every once in a while, whatever. Okay. So that was that. Um, then what's her name? Uh, well, she said who she was and I had to look up the movie. Um, Kat was the woman, what was her name? She was a, she was a, a, from a movie called Sister Ms. Act. 45. No. She Just says kidding. it on there. She's from Miss <laughs> Point. Yeah, not even close. Miss. For- I know. She tells you. Miss <laughs> Point 45 looks like from 1981. Okay. So yeah. I was six. You weren't even born yet. Um, <laughs> I was being This conceived. is a timid and mute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm just kidding. A timid and mute seamstress goes insane after being attacked and raped twice in one day, in which she takes to the streets of New York City after dark and randomly shoots men with a .45 caliber pistol. Um, and yes, I guess she dresses, I, I don't know, did she say it was on Halloween? She dresses as a nun and just like goes to town. I wanted to point something out about Kat. She mentions mass shootings quite a bit. Okay, let's go back. So she talks about this, which she plays the, a character that like mass, kind of mm-hmm. is a mass shooting, right? At a party or wherever she is. She says to Ethan when she first sees him that he looks like a, a, a shooter, doesn't mm-hmm. she? Or I don't yes. know. If she, she doesn't say Unabomber to him, does she? No. Something and then refers when, to it. Something else, right? Like some Like a shooter, school shooter. Then she also says it to... Maddie, when Maddie comes in on the day with her, when she's all covered up because she has the neck mm-hmm. um, wounds on her, um, she says, what are you, the Unabomber? She's very obsessed with this, yeah. I've noticed. I, and I this has to be done purposefully. Like, that's three times now she, there, she's referenced mm-hmm. some sort of mass killing yeah. type thing. Also wanted to mention, this is really funny. I got a text the day we released our last episode from one of our Mutual colleagues, mm-hmm. my friend. Um, I won't say her name because I don't know if she wants me to or not. But she's so she texted me and was like, "Hey, Molly can make you really dehydrated. You you have no you don't know you're dehydrated. And Molly, that's what people die from when they take Molly is not the Molly, it's the dehydration. Oh. So I guess it wasn't totally, um, totally off the mark. Okay. Although I feel like she did overdress. Um, well, thanks. For, anyway, thanks so I, for I that. thought that interesting. Was, I know because we we keep we learn. This is what I love about doing this podcast. I learn new yeah, things I had no idea. all the time. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I don't know. Let's just, I guess, try to summarize the uh... – oh, True Romance, by the way, was about – Alabama Worley was a prostitute, and she – let me just see if I can – here we go. I'll try to make it short. Uh, la, 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 la. What? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm just trying to shorten it. So it's her and Christian Slater. I think he like falls in love with her. They go on um, crime. Mm. Like they're smuggling drugs or something with drugs. That's of course. So they're like fugitives maybe, I think. I think they run off and run, you know, they're they're running from the mm-hmm. police, right? So they're fugitives. I'm pretty sure that's the whole gist of the story. Now I sort of want to see it. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I don't really want to see the Miss Point Forty Five one though. No desire mm. for that one. Um So basically, like at this Halloween party, I mean, I have. Did we talk about Lexi as Bob Ross? Because that was. Oh, crap. I forgot to say that one. That was fantastic. That would be me. I would dress up as something like that. I was (laughs) going to say that. I was going to say that you would totally dress as Bob Ross. It was a fantastic costume. It was hysterical. She did a great job. Again, lots of thought went into these costumes. Lots of purchases. Mm. There's definitely some pre-planning. Yeah. I mean, they had to have planned this. You have to plan this. I mean, I know you can order stuff online and stuff. No, but, but like this homemade like... costumes are better. But I, for somebody who doesn't partake in Halloween, um, I know. Yeah. I'm a big boo. Yeah. I know. I, I know. There. This audience is like, I'm hating more, Diana yeah, more. She doesn't every like Halloween, day. so I don't like her. <laughs> she doesn't like tattoos. So she I... doesn't like Halloween. I don't even know why she's here right now. <laughs> Oh, dear. Anyway, me. I will say when the mom was like, you're supposed to dress attractive. Yeah, I know. People like to be attractive. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I'm i going to flat out say yes. And Dave would always get mad at me. He's like, you look beautiful. And I look <laughs> – I'm like, sorry. I want 
to look attractive on Halloween. And it's an excuse for me to wear a lot of makeup, mm. wear something I wouldn't normally – like I like it for yeah. that, you know, and – um. I like it, and I agree with the mom. But also, I like I did respect the Bob Ross costume. I, I sure mean, did. That was awesome. Yeah, it was brave. You know what? I um, we went to a so, Halloween party. So our neighbors had a Halloween party a couple of years ago. Did I tell you this? So we were forced to I think I wear remember, a costume, you tell and you know, <laughs> I think I know what we you were. were supermarket sweep contestants. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Tammy and Tommy. Like, we had the we had the whole sweatshirts see? with the collar. Yeah, and we did the like. Did you have we put fun? A lot of thought into it, and yeah, I actually had fun. We did the money, we did the whole thing, and that was actually a fun Halloween. And like, I love our costumes. Um, you know, people I go think as like Wilma. You, I could be wrong, and Fred, and they go. You know that, but we yeah. made our costumes, and they were fantastic. I think what you get stressed at. I think what why you don't. Again, I could be totally wrong. I think you don't like Halloween because. Of, the pressure of the planning possibly mm. like and I get that because especially since having like a child I'm like I really don't want to have to stress about a costume because I want it to be good yeah like I don't want it to be lame so then you're like then I get mad like I'm like I think it's stupid I don't want to do the kids this. wanted to do something like I wanted to make them into a vending machine one year wow no no I want to be a dinosaur from the store you know what I mean or I'm like why don't you be <laughs> coffee and he be a donut and we can like make it and I would be into it that way. So it's like you're into it, but, but they're, then not. they're not. Like they're like, so no, I want that Toy Story thing, or you know, they, my son would be mm-hmm. a blow up dinosaur, you know, that cost fifty dollars, and it's mm-hmm. a blow up dinosaur, yeah. you know, or right, Captain America, like out of nowhere, no thought, no thought, just off a no rack. thought. But that's yeah, and I'm and like, that, oh, I we know. can design and a whole thing, put you in a box, and nope, yeah, <laughs> they don't like the home. Now, Donovan costumes. was three years old. He loved. He called them scoopers, um, mm. diggers. He called them. You know, um, oh my god, yeah, he was Why the digger. I, I the had it name for, for a year, and then we gave it yeah. to you because Dave worked his <laughs> butt off. off. Cardboard box, but had like bolts yes. in it. Could move the scooper. He we put it on him for the first time. He starts crying. <laughs> Dave was like, I mean, I think he turned white. Like he was working at night on this thing. Like oh, I mean, he we made him wear, it. but like, yeah, it was heartbreaking. It was like, and I remember I tried to start it. I was like, I'm going to do this. I went on Pinterest mm-hmm. and then I'm showing it. I'm like, ah, I was like really planning this out. And um, Dave, thankfully, my husband is a mechanic and works on cars and he can build stuff too. So anyway, yeah. Okay. Um, did we get everybody's costumes? Well, well, the end. Ted we Bundy, have, the whole the thing, whatever we can fast forward over that. Oh, <laughs> I hate Daniel. He's the creepiest yeah. thing. He's just creepy regardless of the Ted Bundy. He's, he's gross. T- I don't think he's no. cute. He's he. You know what's creepy about him that I realized? His eyes. When he was walking around, no, but what? what he looks like. Here's what's weird. They're at a high school party. Mm-hmm. He is walking, and it's his house. Mm. He is literally walking around the party by himself, mm-hmm. lurking and staring at Cassie. That's not normal. There were no friends around him. Like, who are his friends? Like, right. it really that was weird. He's always seems to be by himself, which that's what's creepy about him, and he's gross. Um, okay, so. At the party, basically, Jules is clearly push uh, pulling away from Rue. She's drunk already yeah. when they meet up with her. And, you know, um, Rue knows something's wrong. It's very stressful. Um, let's see. Wait, remember, when they're at the party, okay. is that they were um, – they were <laughs> it's actually laughing during this episode, it, believe it or not. The twins? So when they were at the party and they were doing the shots and, like, they were, like – they were all like getting hammered and Rue obviously, you know, uh-huh. trying to be sober gal here. Yes. Um, she starts trying to like get it, like have a she was like Tommy oh. Topper comment. Did, <laughs> and all I could think about was the skit from SNL. First of all, Tommy Tommy um, Topper. Tommy, wait, you, I gotta stop and explain what? Tommy Topper because I think you made up that term and nobody knows oh. what you're talking about. Because when you say Tommy <laughs> Topper, I think of being on top for okay. seconds. So no, that's like, not what she's talking about. She's talking about one uppers. Yeah, it's called one upper. One upper. I don't know where you. I know top that, but like nobody says Tommy Topper except for you, and people. Maybe talking it's just about like sex. in my neighborhood. Okay, sorry. Keep going. But anyway, yes, one upper. No, I, I think you made it. Up. And I couldn't think of the girl from, but it was um, what's her name from SNL? And she yeah, was like Saturday Night Live. Yeah, wig. 
Kristen, Kristen Wiig. Wiig, yes. Isn't it Kristen Wiig like, who does that? Um, well, yeah. I got really drunk once, I also, so I was like already like in the bottle of vodka swimming around. So yeah, like, <laughs> I was like, that's so funny. I actually made my own vodka. Yeah, I made my own vodka. Yeah. I was so drunk that I could feel nothing. So. Oh, anyway. Yeah, I know. That was very funny. Yeah, she was, was like good. basically blacked out but going to school and doing homework. And they were just all like, oh, my God. Um, another thing that Rue says, like Lexi's like, you can't even do kid things, you know, mm. to Rue. And she's like, I'm not going to be able to do grown-up things either, you know, Yeah, which is true. And I never thought about that. Um, okay. Uh, so... Where are we here? Jules proceeds. Oh, and she does. Jules does make that comment that she's like, "Oh, I'm drinking or I'm drunk or something," and I was supposed to be your chaperone. So yeah. like, it's coming out. Like she feels like she's like her chaperone yeah. or her take care of me. mother or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So Lexi notices something's off with Jules. Gia is lighting up with one of the twins. Ugh. And I just – this was hysterical. So Rue and Lexi grab him. Yeah. I think it's Troy. This was great. Um, and scare the crap out of him, saying that she met these, like, hardcore people in rehab that would go after him. She starts, like, saying all these names, right? And I'm like – not that I recognize any of the names. Mm-hmm. But I was like, how did she bust out these names? I mean, I know it's a show, but like, and it's not a reality show, but <laughs> – she just didn't even have to think. Well, they're from they're characters from The Wire. Because <laughs> I googled Great show it. Too. I didn't watch The Wire though. You did. I did. Right? I love when Lexi comes over and she's like, "Wait a minute, where's my?" I think I quoted her. And even Weebay, <laughs> I was like, "Who is Weebay?" Like I knew they weren't making this yeah. up, so that's why I had to Google it and find out who it was. Um. <clears throat> Rue goes and apologizes to Fez. Yeah. I still love him. Still love um, him. Still love him. And then sees Jules jump into the pool. Mm. And um, Jules ends up quoting Romeo and Juliet. So I thought that was interesting. She's wearing the costume. Um, Rue is asking her to stop. Then Jules push, push, pushes, pulls her, Rue, into the pool and kisses her underwater. And that's also a scene from Romeo yeah. and Juliet. Um, Rue gets out and that's when we flash back to the night before. And this is probably part of the reason she's also drinking heavily. Nate Black blackmails her. He, he's pre he printed Ugh, out. As he was printing them, I was like, oh, here we go. Sent him. Ugh, I got so mad. He's such a, a uh, and she goes. Oh, I think because um, this is like the part of the show where they bathroom. flash back and forth to like they were flashing yeah. back and forth. Yeah. I think this is the part where they get into maybe – is this the part about Nate? We find out, like, what Nate's been doing? Because mm-hmm. I can go into that. So Nate has, you know, been suspended. So first he was just laying in bed, and then he decided to go stalk people. So he yeah. checks on – I yeah. like how Rue used that – checks on Maddie at school. Then she, he would check on um, – Jules. Jules. He would also check on Jules at night. Yeah. And sit outside her house. I did not Google this again because I'm scared to, but I really don't – I think that he is wrong and I obviously he he's doing it to scare Jules, but I really don't think if those pictures came out – well, first of all, it would be embarrassing, but um, she would not get in trouble for child porn for her own pictures. Right. I, I don't know. But I don't – not at all. I mean – Although distributing would just be, them – the, Yeah, but then they would – like if distributing them and – But that, she wasn't – I don't know. But they could – they couldn't tie it to her. They couldn't tie it to her computer. Right. But other than she sent it to somebody. Yeah. It's like a if that's the case, Cassie's whatever they call it. Cassie has videos of her mm-hmm. all over the place too. Right. So I don't, you know, so it's just annoying. Anyway. And he's obviously obsessed so with he, Jules. I really think yeah, that he's I think he really and, like he's yes. becoming kind of I think he's in love yeah. with her and upset or, or what he thinks is love, but I really do. Um yeah, I'll just go into him. So one note, they the Nate's family goes to dinner to the place they always go to, and mm-hmm. they basically tell them to leave and don't have the table for them. And so, you know, of course the dad's like, I'll remember this. Um <laughs> then so he he blackmails, he visits Tyler again. Mm-hmm. Tyler is Lucas Gage, by the way, by the way, Lucas with a K. If you want to look him up. 
He was in White Lotus and probably some other things. Um, and he blackmails Tyler into c- confessing to choking Maddie and blackmails Jules into filing a report on witnessing this crime. And also Maddie, he obviously tells Maddie to go and say that it was him. So he gets off because of all his blackmailing, yeah. which I was really teed off. And clearly the the t- detective there, the woman, or I think she's a detective, says like something is not right. Mm-hmm. Like like it, yeah. did it all happen on like the same day? Like, <laughs> so stupid. So <laughs> see right through. I feel so bad for Tyler. Oh, that poor guy. <laughs> Wrong place at the – Poor thing. He should have left town like after yeah, that be whole out. thing happened. Before, when he got beat – I would not no, live there. I mean, no. uh, Oh, my no. God. Come on, dude. Um, oh, so let's go back to when they're um, – oh, they, the, No, I, sorry. We were talking about when she's interrogating the, the twin. And she basically does scare him enough and is like – Go tell, go tell Gia she looks pretty, you know, she looks pretty or good mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, oh, Rue ends up going into the bathroom, I think, after the whole pool thing and cries. By the way, there's like a lot of bathrooms at this yeah, house, apparently. Um, <laughs> then she tells Lexi she's a burden and she apologizes. Like they're going to leave. It looked like they were going to leave. And Jules comes out to them and blah, blah, blah. They say they're leaving. I don't know. Whatever. Um Okay, Cassie. Let's go to Cassie. Cassie's story is getting a little more, a little more interesting. Mm. Um, maybe she try. She was going to wear that costume the night before to a party, and he was like, "Oh, I'm going to hear it, you know, from people and blah blah blah." So, um, he makes her change. So then she ends up obviously wearing it to the high school party. Daniel is giving Ugh. me out. She drunk texts yep. McKay, which I thought was hysterical because yep. the errors. And I was like, what's going on? Like, because I was like trying to read it. I'm like, I, I, like autocorrect did not kick in for her. No. Um, McKay's like, you sound like you're drunk. So then we flash back to the night before. WTF with the frat Holy guys. Holy I, cow. I mean, what I, I couldn't, when it first happened and they came in. Oh God, it was, was terrible. Awful. Terrible. Awful. When they, when they first came in, I thought this was them hazing and they were going to be like, you're in, right. you know, because he's been pledging. It wasn't. And it got worse. It was like, it was terrible. Was terrible. Um, oh, my God. Getting a f- Did you hear the phone ringing? Yeah. Okay. Is it your um, landline? Great. No, it's my... <laughs> My cell phone's hooked up to my computer, oh, that's fantastic. which I probably should have never done. So. We could FaceTime. Which I just rejected the call on my <laughs> – no, it's not FaceTime. It's just regular phone call. So <laughs> The only good thing about it is if I'm on my computer and my phone's on vibrate and not in the room and it'll it'll ring yeah. to me. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> I can get so that yeah, out So they're there. in the dorm and um, it's just hard to watch. I, I mean – I, I don't know. I didn't really take the notes on it because it was so terrible. They just like basically jump on him and he's Gross. naked and she's in the bed screaming. Yeah. How did they How get did in? How did they get in? How is your warm open like that? How did they walk through? Like this would not – I mean, hazing happens. We know that. But this kind of stuff, like this is uh, like another Unless, level. And they make yeah, it and they, like, they, not they, believable because you're telling me that you got into a dorm. You didn't lock your door. That's Okay. And then you're dressed like this through the hallways and nobody sa- and nobody hears the screaming for crying out loud. Like I got like really upset and uncomfortable. It's different now, especially like – well, even when when I went – It was loud. When I went to college, we – they were very careful with us. We were never – not that, that anything like that ever happened. No. But they never came to our dorm room. No. Everything was done in private. And like I said, the same thing when they were like hazing them at the party. But that's last usually episode happening. Or whatever episode at, that was. Yeah, but it's happening. That doesn't at their show in houses. front of people, right? Like everybody goes to co- like in like an this attic. This doesn't happen in <sighs> in a basement dorm room. Sorry, no. that's not that's not real. That's not real. I'm sorry. There's no hazing in dorm rooms like like that. No, <laughs> no. And, and if there was, especially nowadays. Yeah. Come on. No. Heck no. Ugh. Come on. Especially that public. Oh, I got so angry. Ugh, that was terrible. It was terrible. They were like calling him gay. Ugh. I mean, it was awful. It was terrible. So and even more awful really. after when he comes out of that was not more. He awful, comes. He goes like, to the bathroom. He's cr- cr- that was terrible. No, that was terrible. And then he to, like practically raped her. Yes, it was. Gr- I was like, what is happening? 
I know. Yeah. It's like he took his anger out on her. I was very disappointed. Yeah. In McKay. Ugh. Didn't seem um, like him at all. I was like, nope. No. I felt so, I felt sick so bad. That. And she had scratches on her oh. back that were like, yeah. I was like, what? Oh, it was terrible. Um, so then at the party, Daniel starts dancing with her again. I write, he is creepy. They go upstairs into of a bedroom course, and then McKay though. shows of up. Course. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> the bottom of my feet were like, ah, like tingling. I was like, no. I'm like, no, going no, on? no. And how is she doing this again? Like, oh, leading him. Yeah, like, come on. But anyway. Yeah. Um, so then Lexi sees, mm-hmm. Bob Ross sees, and she texts her. But, you know, Cassie probably didn't see mm-hmm. it. Lexi's trying to distract him. She ends up telling him that Cassie went home. And I was like, effing Daniel. Freaking hate him. She won't sleep with him, so he puts her down. Oh, my God. Oh, did geez. you think that McKay was going to walk in? Because I sure as heck did. I was like, oh, this is happening yeah. right now. This oh, is yeah. absolutely happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I was hoping the door was locked. That wouldn't happen. But anyway. um. So then she leaves and she walks home. She's crying and everything. Daniel proceeds to like drink more and then he and Kat make eye contact. And I just wrote, yeah. ew. Um, so then Cassie gets home, steals her mom's mm. wine, the rosé, I believe it was. Yeah. She's in the ba- she sits in the bathroom and she's drinking. She sees maxi pads and basically curses. And you're like, oh no. She obviously her period's yeah. late. I that's what I you know it's from that. I don't want to sound stupid too, but like I no, that's right. Saw um what was it? I thought I saw something in the tampon box too. No, I thought there, there was somebody weird. like there was a happened. camera. There wasn't or something just. In it. I was like, what is going on? Why did they, why are they like? I wasn't putting it oh. together yet. Oh jeez. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see that. And I was like, so I watched it Oh, three you thought times. she saw something like, funky in the box. Did she find something? That is hysterical. Is it, isn't that a hair? Because like, you think there's like yeah. more meaning to it because everybody's filming right. everybody also, it I seems, know right? Like, I don't know. So it took me a little time. Yeah. A little <laughs> weird. That's funny. Well, I know at first I think I was like, yeah. what? What is it? Yeah. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. Then it, then it sank yeah. in. No, it took me a little bit too because I feel like there was other stuff. Or, that That was a messy yeah. bathroom and there was like. I wanted it was like to, spilled yeah. over. I'm pretty sure coming I out. I was my like, bathroom. After I know. That. I was like, "Oh, get the clutter." That's a lot of clutter. After that, yeah. It was. Yeah, it was. Um, all right, cat. I think this is my last part, unless I'm forgetting something because I went off a little. I went off no, the I notes. Mean, like it I kind of just. We went. haven't talked about what happened with cat. Spontaneous night, here. <laughs> yeah, off the script. That's what I did. I couldn't think of the saying. Cat has like four regulars that she's meeting with online and gets paid, and they just all want to be done. This is getting like <laughs> she could see her face. I wish you could see <laughs> Diana's face. Um, she has like four regulars she meets with. I just said that all they all they want to they want to be dominated. Then this other one, Mas. It's either Master Shade because that's how she spells her name, or Master Sade. Master Sade ninety nine. Offers three hundred dollars mm. for thirty minutes. She says no, but then they buy everything on the wish list for her. Yeah, <clears throat> right. On yeah. her Amazon wish list. So she's like, hmm. So oh, I already have the part about the mass shooting thing. Um, yeah, she's. Do we? I see. Now I'm, I'm think I'm mixing up. Um, I think I might be mixing up episode uh, episodes. So I'm just gonna go into when they're at the party. Ethan comes up to her. Yeah. And tries to, you know, asks what happened the night of the carnival. She's a jerk to him and basically tells him the chances of being boyfriend, girlfriend are zero. Um, could, could he just come out with it and say, like, that was my sister already? I know. Like, so we can my sister's friend. The chase here? My sister's friend. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Well, I just want to first go <laughs> into who Ethan is. Ethan is played by Austin Abrams. Mm-hmm. That's poor kid. <laughs> he doesn't have an Instagram account, I don't think. Um, Come on. What are you doing? I know. And you on the TikTok? I'm on the Ethan, TikTok. <laughs> oh, I thought he's been in other stuff, I think. Yeah. Austin Noah Abrams. Uh oh, he was in The Walking Dead. I knew there was a big oh, one before okay. this one. Yeah. yeah. Then he was in something called Dash and Lily. 
The Kings of Summer. That was a long time ago. Paper Towns, Brad Status, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and Chemical Hearts, which I've never heard of. So, never heard of it. So he, he, he pulls her. He goes up to her. Mm-hmm. He gets, you know, he gets tough and firm, and he brings her into the bathroom. And I said, I love a good bathroom hookup, by the way. <laughs> Ew. You, have well, you ever hooked up in a bathroom? bathrooms at this party. I know. I mean, have you ever hooked up in a bathroom? Uh, ew. I knew you were going to Yeah. No? Ew. Okay. That's like, do okay. you? I forgot. Well, no. <laughs> this happened. No, I for, not for me. I forgot. This actually, no, I will say, I think I've only hooked up in one bathroom. Pretty sure. Hey, you know when you need privacy, you need privacy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It wasn't because like there were other options and I was like, no, you know what? (laughs) Oh, it was a choice. Okay. Like this would be cool. No, it was not. It was, I mean, it kind of wasn't a choice. Like for, right. We wanted, apparently. I mean, I've heard of people like, oh, let's go in the laundry room or something. Like, because this was like, this was (laughs) when I was young. This was not like. Right, marriage thing, Um, because it's uncomfortable, you know. Well, clearly the house cleaner was not at this party before they had probably not. Yeah, it was. I mean, she wasn't sitting on the toilet, at least, but still, I don't know. Thank goodness. Um, This also reminded me. Have we talked about can't hardly wait? We have a little bit, right? I don't know on the podcast. I don't know. I don't know if we have. Maybe can't hardly wait. Like I, that was in a movie obsessed with when I was. Oh, I guess in my 20s. I was thinking that was when I was in high school. But no, it was in my 20s. I watched it quite a few times, like knew a lot of the lines in it. And there is a bathroom hookup scene in that movie. So it reminded me of that. Uh, um, I think Seth Green and then I forgot the woman's name. And she was in, um, hmm. oh my gosh, oh my gosh, really good show on HBO about a funeral home. They owned a funeral home. It was about every episode someone would die. She was the redhead in it. Anyway. Oh dear! Yeah. I digress. No, it was it was really good. Anyway, the guy from Dexter was in it. <laughs> he was in this first before okay. Dexter. Anyway, okay. She at I mean, okay. Cat annoys me because she's like, "How many people have you been with? I'm not gonna f a virgin." And I was like, "Oh my god!" Little, mm, tw- yeah, she's starting to get I'm call her name, and I'm, I'm not gonna say it. Too spicy for me. Yeah. So he proceeds to just decide to go down on her. Clearly, he is a virgin he ends up having his own fun too early in his pants um yeah yeah yes and then she he goes back and she's gone because um is that all i got oh so then at the end nate and maddie show up to the party he's wearing an old school prisoner Mm. costume and of course she ready what she's dressed up like which i was like what um she yeah, plays she? Um, from a movie. She dressed up as Iris, a 12-year-old Jodie Foster from the 1976 movie Taxi Driver. Iris in that movie oh, was just often often described as a teen prostitute, which is troubling for about a million reasons. That's what that says. Um, mm. Yeah. So, And then when they walk in, everyone cheers. And then he looks at Jules and Jules is like, oh, crap. Um, I just was so disgusted by everybody and I wanted yeah. to clock him in the head and clock all the people at the party in the head too and mm-hmm. yeah shut it down yeah yeah it's um and I already watched episode 7 I know we'll talk about that another but that yes. one was whew. I did I too this episode was wild ooh hang on I liked even though people listening to our podcast already probably watched all of these episodes yes but, and then um, some I'm watching them one by one over here. Yeah. Ugh. Um so. I really liked the Halloween episode, even though it was upsetting. Yeah. I liked well, I liked doing the digging for the Halloween costumes because that's that's why I mm. wanted to do this podcast. Because I like doing the digging of the reasons behind things. And this one I wasn't really doing at first, and then I was like, maybe I should try to see what the heck, who they are, <laughs> who their costumes are. <laughs> Yeah. And I actually found out cats before she said it on the show because I like paused and I was like, what is, what is going on? So anyway. Yeah. Um, 
That's the good thing about talking about a show that aired like two years ago. There's a lot of information about the episodes mm-hmm. online. <laughs> Unlike when we when we first when we start yeah, a show, sense. Um, we uh, you know sometimes I can't find some information, yeah. right? But there's yeah. a lot of banter that happens after the show airs. And yes, stuff, so. yes. Well, all right. Well, I can't wait to talk about the next episode. Me neither. <laughs> All so right. Then. Yes. And you know, you can always email us homebodiesonly at gmail.com. And you can also rate us. Click the five stars. Please right. rate the podcast. Bye. Indeed. Bye.